a very good evening to one and all. Okay, uh, today we move on to our next module that's, that is asymmetric ciphers. So last class we completed our module three uh, where we had a discussion about uh, symmetric key ciphers and the end we just had a glimpse of asymmetric key cipher which is also called as uh, private key cipher. Okay, or sorry, it's also called as public key ciphers. Right. And we are, uh, came across a technique called RSA algorithm, which is one of the prominent technique in asymmetric key ciphers. So in this module, we will be starting a discussion about uh, one of the main application of asymmetric key cipher, where your asymmetric key cipher is going to help our uh, symmetric key block ciphers to change their keys, exchange the keys, especially because in symmetric key ciphers, we will be using the same key for encryption and decryption. So how this key is going to be exchanged among these two entities? Okay. So the key exchange algorithm we'll be discussing first. In that we'll be discussing about the Fielman key exchange algorithm. Then we move on to two another prominent uh, uh, asymmetric key ciphers called Elgamal cryptosystem. Then elliptic curve cryptography. Already we had a idea about elliptic curve arithmetic. Right. How this elliptic curve arithmetic is used to help the cryptography? Technique or any crypto system. Okay. Then we'll conclude this module with a PN sequence generation based on asymmetric key ciphers. So last class we, I mean, we just saw a PN sequence generation based on symmetric key ciphers. Uh, how we have ANSI, it's uh, 1.9, uh, which is nothing but a triple DES algorithm, which is used for PN sequence generation. Right. Similarly, we'll be seeing asymmetric key ciphers also for PN sequence generation. To start off with the Diffie-Hellman key exchange algorithm, okay, we should know what is what is meant by symmetric key distribution. Okay, so we already know that symmetric key cryptography is uh, efficient than asymmetric key, key cryptography whenever it comes for enciphering large messages. Computationally, it is quick. That is, symmetric key cryptography is quick compared to asymmetric key cryptography. Right. For that, we'll, most of the people will go for symmetric key uh, crypto system whenever you have large messages. Okay, One of the challenging issues in this symmetric key cryptography, that is your AES, DES algorithm, something but how efficiently or how securely you are going to share the secret key. That is, we'll be using the same key called K for both encryption and decryption. Right. So how we are going to share this <coughs> secret key between the two parties, that is transmitter and receiver. So for this, there is an issue called distribution of key issue. The initial people proposed a method called KDC, that is called key distribution center. Okay, then this we will see what is this session key means okay, later. Okay, what is this key distribution center? So when uh, symmetric key cryptography came into existence, okay, to share the key efficiently, they kept a trusted third party. It's like a common point between all the users where each and every user will be registering themselves a particular center. And this center is called key distribution center, which shortly called as KDC. So a particular uh, number of users or uh, devices which have been in a particular locality or particular network will be connected or will be registering to one KDC. Okay. So this registration will be done using a unique secret key. For example, in this case, this K Alice is nothing but the registration key of Alice with respect to KDC. So this key K Alice will be known only to Alice and the KDC. No other person will know this key. <coughs> Similarly, K Bob will be known only to Bob and KDC and they will be registering with KDC using this key alone. Okay. So all the communication between Alice and KDC, Bob and KDC, Anne and KDC, everything will be done via this key alone. So this is called as a secret key. This is a secret key will be known to the members and KDC alone. So for example, if assume that now <coughs> Alice want to communicate. Okay, so we should go with Alice and Bob. Okay, now we'll see. Anne want to communicate with George. Okay. So using a symmetric key cipher, assume that they are going with AES algorithm. So they need a key which will be used for both encryption and decryption. And the key is now going to be generated by Anne. Okay. And this key has to be shared with George. 
okay generally okay no, okay assume that it's not generated by and okay they are going to use a key called k okay, which will be used by both and and george for encryption and decryption so for this purpose what they will do in the sense and will request kdc that he want to communicate with george who is registered under him okay so kdc will first check authentication of i mean whether and is a proper person or not once it is uh, confirmed then kdc will provide with the key called k okay kdc will provide the key k okay, for the communication purpose and this k will be provided to both and as well as for george okay so both of them will get the key k which is uh, the encryption decryption key from kdc and once the key is distributed then kdc is part is over then the communication will be happening directly between ann and george only for key distribution the communication will be via kdc once key is obtained then kdc is part is over then ann can able to directly transmit data to george using the key called k only for the particular session okay that is for the one time communication suppose they have, now after the communication the link is broken i mean they have stopped the communication after few times or few days again and want to communicate with george means then kdc will provide with another key okay using this key the communication will be happening between ann and george okay so for particular session they provide one of the keys which will be used for encryption and decryption and that key is called as session key that is for particular session we'll be using uh, that particular unique key for encryption description and decryption so this key is called as my session key secret key is nothing but the key known to only to the members and kdc and session keys are nothing but the shared keys which will be used for encryption and decryption okay. so this is how the key kdc works is it clear guys how kdc works if it is clear raise your hand uh, if you have any doubts only during key distribution will kdc will come into picture once the key is shared kdc will move apart then the communication will be directly between the transmitter and receiver alone right thank you fashish so can you tell us about uh, how the session key is used like uh, for communication does it change after a certain point of time yeah so the session key is nothing but the encryption key to be our understanding this is the encryption key will be used at both I mean encryption and decryption key used for both transmit and receiver end assume that now uh, an is going to transmit like it has only uh, like four bits like this and he want to transmit to george for this they are using this session key k so this transmission is happening on uh, today's 27th uh, september right okay and using this key the, the data is transmitted here successfully okay suppose tomorrow an is want to again transmit means then an will be provided with the, some other different key assume that like, the next key is its okay but both an and george are going to uh, i mean uh, going to take part but now the key will be changed only for that one instant that particular key will be used that key is called a session key which will be used for both encryption and decryption for next instant for continuous transmission for one go they will be using one key for second time for example after in 27 september now it is around 6 10 right now say after 6 10 the transmission is over uh, ann and george have been disconnected then around 7 pm again they want to uh, again transmit or receive means then again they have to contact kdc to provide with the another session key they can't use the same key for next session also clear around yes sir yeah so this is a basic operation how your kdc works right and there are different ways uh, the kdcs can be uh, connected like uh, topology of kdc will vary this is called flat multiple kdcs because each kdc is look like a central server and it can accommodate only a limited amount of members suppose the members have been keep on increasing then multiple kdcs will be connected and they will be connected via wired connection in back end so the back end connection will be a wired one okay for assume that alice is connected to KDC one. Assume that uh, this is KDC like no uh, ten. Assume this is KDC ten, and Bob is connected to KDC ten. Means if Alice want to communicate to Bob, 
he will uh, request uh, to KDC one. That is the KDC where it has registered. Like he want to communicate with Bob. So this KDC will communicate with other KDC and he will find which KDC this Bob is uh, connected and he will request this KDC to intimate Bob that Alice is going to communicate via this key. Okay. So this communication will happen. I mean uh, the session key uh, sharing will be happen via this KDC. Once keys are shared, then the communication is direct. Right. Next one is hierarchical uh, multiple KDCs, which have been uh, especially uh, can able to compare with uh, like how our uh, telephone network works. Right. So here, if you have Alice, uh, assume that um, okay, this is a local KDC. So assume this is a KDC which is belonging to Chennai. This is to Vellore. Uh, this is to and the place we coin but okay. So sorry guys, uh, being I am from south, I don't know which places in other states. Don't uh, mistake me. Okay, so Chennai will look fine. So there are multiple local KDCs, and all these KDCs are connected to one of the state KDCs called Tamil Nadu. Right, and this one, assume this is Maharashtra's KDC, where you have uh, uh, Mumbai, Pune, I don't know other places, guys. Sorry, okay. So we have other places connected to this one. And this for each and every state, they'll have uh, one um, KDC, I mean, for each state, and all these things will be connected to local cities. Assume Alice is sitting, sitting in, Ch in Chennai and want to communicate with Bob, who is in New York. Okay. So this will be connected to India's KDC. Assume that, uh, okay, here in this example, they show from state to state. Okay. So if you want uh, Bob will be sitting here, means here will be having a separate KDC. Okay. We'll be having another KDC which will belong to USA. Okay, this will be connected here, and here the connection will be coming from here. So from USA to that particular uh, uh, province, then from here to New York's uh, KDC. From there they'll communicate with Bob. So this is a hierarchical multiple KDCs works out. Right now, okay, sorry guys. Is it visible? The screen is visible, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Session keys, we already saw what do you mean by session key. I hope now uh, everyone are clear about uh, KDC's topology and this one shows uh, the exact uh, procedure, whatever just uh, discussed, how the keys are going to be shared. Like for example, here Alice is going to communicate with Bob. The first step, Alice, what it will do in the sense, and these are the, the terminologies used here. KA is nothing but the key known between Alice and KDC, which is a secret key. Okay, so encryption is so so looking like a lock and KA means it means the particular part is encrypted using KA and KB is nothing but the key between Bob and KDC. Anything with this lock shows that it is encrypted with uh, Bob's and KDC's thing. Then this one is the thing by the session key. That is the key we, we always used to call K, which is used for both encryption and decryption. Right. So first step, Alice, what it will I'll tell to KDC instance, he, this, is, this is Alice and he want to communicate with Bob. Then this KDC will check whether the Alice is registered with him, Bob is registered with him. Okay. Once it is done, then it will transmit two packets. That is uh, one cap packet kept inside another packet. For example, here the out, outer packet is encrypted with KA. That is a key known only between Alice and KDC. Right, and this outer packet will have a session key. That's all. So that you can able to open only the outer packet, and you can able to take the session key here. So K is received at Alice end. So this unopened packet, which is encrypted using KB, which is a key known only to Bob and this KDC. This unopened packet will be transmitted directly to Bob from Alice itself. So this one will once Bob receiving receiving this packet. He can able to open this uh, using his key and he will check who is the person who's going to communicate. Okay, and that is Alice want to communicate with Bob using this key. So this key is now received here. Then afterwards the communication will happen directly between Alice and Bob. KDC's part is over at step two itself. Right, I hope this will uh, give you a clear picture how KDC's works. Is it clear guys regarding the uh, KDC's operation? If someone sent in the chat box, sorry, I didn't see. 
Okay, is multiple flat keys used for higher security so that we have many keys in between transmitter and receiver? Um, Kash is actually not for having multiple keys. In order to support multiple members alone, they go for multiple KDCs. Because why we can't able to use multiple keys? I mean, it's a random generator means you can able to support many random keys based upon the algorithm and uh, the required key size will be provided by KDC. For example, if you're going with uh, like for a uh, DES algorithm, assume. So there the cipher key is nothing but uh, cipher key is 56 bit. With the parity, it will be 64 bit. So the KDC will be providing 64 bit key. Whereas if you are using AES algorithm, then the KDC have to provide it to 128 bit for you. Is it clear, Kashish? Yes, sir. Okay, sorry, just now I saw the chat message. So apart from this, I hope uh, I know you people are clear with what do you mean by a session key and KDCs, right? If it is clear, raise your hand. If you have doubts, you can ask me now. Uh, sir, Absolutely. is there any uh, specific number of uh, limit of uh, members per KDC? Uh, that's based upon the hardware. Uh, I mean, uh, what can I say? Okay, sir. Uh, the what type of hardware which you're going to use, the memory which you're going to use, KDCs. Don't worry, nowadays KDCs have been eradicated. This is the first solution they provided. Nowadays, we don't have KDCs now. Because as I said, uh, at early stages, the number of devices were less, so the KDCs can able to support. Now we can able to see even a single human being is carrying nearly minimum on an average of five wireless devices. Right. So now KDC have been eradicated. What you said is based upon hardware compatibility, the uh, number of devices supported per KDC will be. Okay, sir. Yeah. Also, Car sir, in yes, this Kashi. case, uh, K A is the session key. Uh, a, yeah. No, no, K A is nothing but the key between Alice and uh, KDC. K B is nothing but the key which is known only with KDC and Bob. I mean, this K A, K A, B are nothing but these things. This is K A, this is K B. That is a yes. uh, key so used for registration of KDC. Is, uh, like session key is not known to either of the PCs. Yes, or yes, or yes. Bef before contacting KDCs, KDC, both Alice and Bob doesn't know the uh, session key. Only KDC will distribute. KDC is like an exam supervisor will be distributing the paper, I mean, question paper. That's all. The question paper is nothing but a K. Okay. So, so the collection of K, Alice and K, Bob is uh, the session key for the particular connection. I can't get you. Can you repeat once more? So, uh, like uh, in the previous diagram, the one you showed right now. This one, no? one second, I'll just this one. Yes, sir. Okay. So, so the, coll the collection of KA and KB is the session key for the particular connection. No, no. KA and KB are nothing but the key which will be used by Alice and Bob to register with KDC. Before communication itself, they would have been registering with KDC, right? That okay. key is a member. For that, they'll use KA, KB. This is a key like shape, uh, this one is nothing but the session key, KA. It shall be used for encryption and decryption. That is communication between Alice and Bob. Okay, sir. The session key is nothing but we use for communication. This K and KB is nothing but uh, for registering themselves for the particular KDC. Okay, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now we move on to next one called symmetric key agreement because uh, what people started to uh, question in the sense the trust issue came into existence. Suppose any hacker can able to compromise KDC, he can able to interrupt with all the communication between all the members, right? So uh, what the users thought in sense, they should be able to create a session key okay, without them, I mean, uh, without involvement of KDCs. That is a session key should be created among themselves without KDC. Okay. So the method of creating the session key without uh, using K, I mean KDC is called, I mean, sorry, the method of creating a session key without KDC is called as symmetric key agreement. This is the method nowadays we people are using. That is, uh, we can't able to have a, a trust, more trust can't be interested on a third party. Okay, so people started to move away from KDC and we have a separate uh, uh, discussion on this uh, in upcoming module. Okay, in this module, we have a few discussion. I don't know why the syllabus have been framed in such a way. 
Okay, we'll have a detailed uh, symmetric agreement in the upcoming modules. As of now, it's like an introduction. Okay, so the KDCs have been eradicated and they want to create a, a session key. So no need to have the secret key registration or the stuff on top. So I'll be sitting here, Alice, Bob, if you want to communicate, you will directly contact Bob, I want to communicate with you. Then there are certain methods to create a session key okay, so that they both can able to uh, securely share the session key. Okay, that method is called a symmetric key agreement. So under the symmetric key agreement, there are two famous uh, technique. One is called Diffie-Hellman key agreement and another one is called station to station key agreement. Right. So in this, uh, we will be discussing Diffie-Hellman uh, uh, key agreement as per the syllabus. Okay, this is a very, very basic thing. It's very, very uh, simple logic here. Okay, so everyone in the particular network will know a public value called PNG. It's like integers, whatever we are speaking about, uh, uh, whenever asymmetric cryptography technique comes into picture, everything will be in terms of integer. PNG are uh, public values. Okay. Uh, so this PNG will be known to everyone. Suppose Alice want to communicate with Bob. Okay. What will do in sense, Alice will create a value called R1 by using G rising to a power H mod P. Okay. This H is nothing but the secret key a secret value known only to Alice. No one other person can know the value of this X. Once this R1 is found, he will transmit this R1 to Bob saying that he want to communicate with Bob. Meanwhile, once Bob, what will do in sense, he will also take the public values P and G and he will create his own value called R2 by rising G to the power Y, which is again a secret value Okay, which is known only to Bob. Okay, now this R2 is shared here. Now R2, which is uh, the value of Bob, is present with Alice. R1, which is the value of Alice, is present with Bob. Okay, once this R2 is received, now they are creating the session key called K. How in sense again the R2 is rising to power X. Again, the same secret value with modulo P. And here Bob is also creating the same value K by raising the R1 to power Y mod P. Because you can able to see, ultimately, while here the R2 is nothing but having the value of G rising to power Y, and here R1 is having the value of G rising to power X. Ultimately, both are creating G power XY. But here, both of them doesn't have the knowledge of what is the value of X. I mean, I mean the value of X is not known to Bob, uh, and the value of y is not known to Alice here. And they're creating the session key here. And don't worry, this uh, key size, uh, I mean, sir, sir, simple value of x and y means they can able to take anti-log, they can able to find the, so they can take logarithm, they can able to find the data. But in reality, okay, the key size will be running like around 152 digit, sorry, roughly 150 digits. Assume that how the value of X and uh, G and P will be look like. Okay, for our example, we will be using smaller digits, but real time it will run for minimum of 150 digits. Okay. So this is how a defi element key agreement works on. Is it clear, guys, how this process works? defi element key agreement. Excuse me, sir. What is P and G in this case? These, these are two integers. Uh, to be specific, two uh, large prime numbers, which is known to the particular uh, a group or particular network. It's like a public value. Anyone can able to know what is the values of PNG. Okay, so like PNG are known to both the yes. so uh, PNG values are known like for two for one transmitter and one receiver there is one PNG value for other transmitter and other receiver there will be different PNG value. No, for example, if uh, you are having a network, assume that you are uh, sitting in TT and there are you deploy like uh, hundreds of uh, sensor networks in TT. Okay, all these sensor networks will have a common PNG. In SDT, we will be having some other values of PNG. Okay, suppose now TT and uh, SJT people, for example, uh, you have SJT here. Guys, I hope everyone uh, in this, uh, I mean, you already visited VAT, right? No second years or no first years here. No second years here, right? Anyone from second year here? Right, because and one more class while I was telling example, they said, sir, for, for ME guys, I think so. 
They said we have not seen a TAT. We don't know what is TT and STT. Okay, that's why. So for inside TT and G, and um, I mean inside TT, they'll be having a G, I mean GNP value. Okay, for inside SJT, they'll be having GNP value. Suppose this is the entire VAT campus. And from people from SJD want to communicate with TT, they will be having another separate GNP. Okay, like PNG or GNP, whatever you say. So, how in the sense a particular network they can able to have one public value? Is it clear, uh, Aru? No? Yes, sir. Yeah, Kashish. Uh, Kashish is about to second. Yes, sir. Clear, sir. Yeah. So, this is a basic uh, thing how the field and key agreement works. Okay, and as I said, this is a secret, I mean, the shared key. And pictorially speaking, it's like, uh, for example, you have a value of G with you, and I'm filling with a secret known to me, S, and secret known only to me, Y. S changing, again, I'm filling with the secrets known to particular entities. You get all these three values, S, Y, and G, again, S, Y, and G, same concept. So this is an example which will help you to understand very easily. For your understanding, I'm giving very, very small numbers. Okay, in real situation, the numbers will be very large. So assume that now I have the public values G is to be 7 and P to be 23. Okay. Now Alice is choosing the value of X to be 3. Okay. So he will be calculating R1. Okay. So R1 is nothing but we already know it's nothing but whatever the value of G which is risen to power X more P. So 7 power 3 more 23. I hope everyone know how to use calculators to find this one. You get 21 here. Then Bob chooses Y to be 6, and this R2 is created. I mean, created. So I just ask okay. 7 power 6 more 23, you are getting 4. Right. So now my values of uh, R1, R2 has to be shared between Alice and Bob. Okay. So this 4 will be transmitted to Alice, and this 21 will be transmitted to Bob. It's like a cross. Right. So Alice is sending this 21 to Bob. So 21 came to Bob. And Bob is sending 4 to Alice. 4 is received to Alice. Now, again, now they are going to create a session key called K. So Alice's secret value is 3. So what are the value it is received from Bob? 4 is risen to power 3, mod 23. Okay, 4 power 3. We will be getting as 16 into 4, something and more 23 will be getting 18. Again, Bob will calculate this one, but here 21 is a value received uh, from Alice, which will be licensed to the power 6, which is a no, I mean data known to I mean secret known to Bob alone. So 21 power 6 more 23 again will give me 18. So now you can able to see that both of them get the same key called K. Okay, that's the, how they are uh, sharing this one. Without sharing their personal secrets, that is, sets and why is not shared between Alice and Bob. Without this knowledge, securely they can be able to uh, share this key. Is it clear, guys? This concept of uh, the element key agreement. Yeah. Speaking, this is worthy for ten marks. Just imagine nothing here. If you are well versed with using calculators, you can easily score ten marks in the element. Right. Yeah, the same thing. If you compute the G power X, Y mod P also, you can able to cross check. You'll be getting the same thing. Right. This is how a real time thing will be looking like. See, the value of P is roughly 159 digit number. This will be created like uh, using any random functions, some random number. The G is small, X is three digit, and Y is three digits. This is enough for us because. If you calculate this R1, R2, you can able to see how big the key at class we get. Right. Then accordingly, they can able to use the data for themselves. Right. So we'll see the security issues of defilement. There are two attacks majorly uh, take place in defilement algorithm. One is called discrete logarithm attack. This will occur if we choose values of uh, this G, P, as we had in our example here. We choose such a small number, they can able to easily make a discrete logarithm attack. That is taking logarithm, right? Then comes the man in the middle attack. Okay. 
This man in middle attack is one of the major drawback in Defi and Man. How in the sense this is how a man in middle attack will work on. I have, I mean Alice is going to communicate with Bob. Now Eve is nothing but the interceptor or the, the attacker. So Alice will be uh, creating this R1 and he will be transmitting. What Eve will do since he will block the transmission, he will receive this R1 and he will keep himself. Okay. And he will create R2 using his secret value called Z. Okay. And he will send R2 here. But R2 which is received here from Alice will be known that it is R2 is a value sent from Bob. But actually Eve is transmitting. And at the same time Eve is transmitting this R2 here. So this R2 will be assumed it is nothing but R1 transmitted from Alice. Okay. Bob will think this is nothing but the R1 inside R1 value transmitted from Alice. Okay, this R1 R2 transmission is inter intercepted by Eve and he has created his own value called R2 and he is transmitted here. Now Bob what will do since so based on this uh, sorry based on this R1 received one second there is a connection issue. Okay, so R3 which will be generated by Bob using his secret value will be shared and he will be I mean he will be receiving this R3 Okay, that is the exact value which is transmitted from Bob. Right. So now what Alice and Bob will think in a sense, they have successfully got the, the random values R1, R2 is received and they will create a session key. So this K1 is nothing but the key created between Alice and Eve. So whatever the communication Alice is going to transmit to Bob will be intercepted by Eve. Because it's going to be uh, encrypted using K1. So you can easily use this K1. You can able to decrypt the message. And K2 is nothing but the key which is known to only Eve and Bob. So once uh, Eve has received the message from Alice, he will decrypt. He will take the original message. He will change it to some other message. And he will encrypt it using K2. And he will transfer Bob. What Bob will think in sense, this is the message uh, received from uh, Alice. So he will decrypt and he will take. So actually speaking, this K1 is and K2 are duplicate keys created by this attacker. This is called man in the middle attack. Is it this, this will only uh, destroy the the message, right? Like yes, he will yes. also not receive it. Yeah, he will. He can able to uh, retrieve the message. Yeah, they cannot decrypt it, no? They can decrypt because he is impersonating himself as a Bob. So both of them have the same session key. Okay. Like K1 is a key known to both Alice and Bob and Eve. And Eve will come to know what is the encryption technique used by Alice. So once he knows the encryption technique used by Alice, then he can able to easily decrypt because he is having the main thing, the keys with him. Is it clear, Arun? Uh, okay, sir. I, I think. Sir. Yeah, Kash. Would Alice and Bob be able to identify that there, there has been a man in the middle attack? Yes, for that we are using a separate technique called uh, data authentication technique. Okay, I'm just now pinpointing okay. only the issue in the defi element agreement. Uh, there is a separate algorithm called uh, hashing algorithm, which is like a backbone of our blockchain and cryptocurrencies. Where the authentication, first they have to authenticate whether that is Alice or not, or this is Eve or not. Because the data, so Alice is uh, transmitting this R1. Alice is transferring its R1, it is received here. Eve is uh, impersonating himself as Bob, right? So at this point, Alice will run an uh, authentication algorithm now to prove that this R2 is received from Bob or not. Okay, this is a separate topic which we'll be discussing in our module 5. Next module. Right. Okay. So, so at that time, using... they can able to find the, the man in the middle. Yeah, yeah someone. Support. Sir, uh, Eve is using GNP to uh, get X and Y then from the signals they receive, right? No. That's how they break the uh, no. decrypted? No, no. He is not uh, taking the values of X and Y at all. You can able to see he is using his own secret value Z. And yes. instead of, uh, okay, now for example, you just uh, forget this part. If you see the communication between Alice and Eve itself, R1, R2 is transmitted, then session key. The same process whichever happening here. 
okay sir okay sir got this it. process is happening between instead of bob eve is sitting here okay yes, and in the second half instead of alice eve is sitting here and bob is sitting there that is he is sitting in between and uh, he is doing all the stuff if you just hide alice part and you can able to see this part here is it clear around yes sir yeah right so now we move on to our next one i mean with this uh, uh, we are concluding our uh, defi elman uh, key agreement now we move on to a crypto system called uh, lgamal crypto system like how rsa is one of the uh, asymmetric cryptographic technique similarly lgamal is also one of the famous technique so here in lgamal uh, it is based upon uh, discrete logarithm issues that is how we had a uh, uh order of element uh, primitive roots other stuff these things will be used here so we'll see uh, how this one works out so this is a general outline so as of a time permits we'll have a discussion over this one then we'll extend this in this class also right so this is a uh, general idea about key generation how occurs encryption and decryption i want everyone to listen to this very carefully if you have any doubts you can ask me here so here we start with key generation process here like similar to our rsa algorithm right but here we are choosing only in rsa we will be choosing two values like p and q two large prime numbers then we will compute n and go on here the first thing we will be choosing only one large prime number okay then i will be choosing e1 which will be a primitive root with respect to this large prime number that is you having a group like this Z P star. This is the prime number which I've chosen. Right for this particular group. Okay, I'll be choosing a primitive root. I hope everyone remembers what is a primitive root. Can anyone tell what is a primitive root? Just fresh from your cat one syllabus. I hope everyone remember what is order of the group, order of the element. When order of the element is equal to phi of n. then i can able to call that particular element as a primitive root like for this group we will be having few primitive roots out of which i'll be choosing one of the primitive root then i'll be choosing a value of d okay then i'll be creating another value called e2 here this is a new part here such that e1 power d modulo p will be equal to e2 so in this case the public keys are three values e1 e2 and p whereas if you see in rsa algorithm we have only um, two public values e and n that's all whereas here we have three public values e1 e2 and p and d is a private key like we have one uh, private key similar here also we have only one private key now we come to the encryption process so i want everyone to listen to this carefully because in, there is a typo mistake in book here they have again printed c1 actually this c2 okay So in this algorithm crypto system, we are going to get two cipher text. That is C1 and C2. Okay. So the C1 is created using the public value called E1 and P, which is E1 is rising to the power R. Here comes a unique feature of this algorithm crypto system. This R is a secret value known only to transmitter. That is, R is alone will have the secret value. generally in uh, our public key cryptography only the receiver will have a secret key called private key whereas in lgamal there is a secret value called r which is known only to transmitter right so this is like how a defi elman works similar way it will work okay so c1 is created simply using e1 power r mod p no plain text is involved in c1 now i am creating a cipher text c2 which is nothing but again e2 value okay this e2 value is taken Right, which is rising to power r, and multiply with the plain text value. So here all the things are going to be in integers, so it's a common uh, general multiplication. Then a modulo p. Now you have obtained your c1 and c2, and at the decryption end, the algorithm how it works in sense, you'll be having a c2 multiply with c1, whatever c1 you have received, you'll be rising it to power d. Then the entire values multiplicative inverse for this modulo p will be found. Which will be multiplied with C2 to get the plain text P back. Okay, so I hope the general outline is it clear, guys? How this 
uh, L gamma works. Here we are, I mean, the main points you people have to remember here. Here we are having three public key values E1, E2, E1, E2, and P, and one private key D, and two ciphertext C1 and C2. C1 utilizes only the public values, two public values E1 and P using the secret value R. Only C2 involves the involvement of plain text P. Again, another public value E2, rise to power R multiplied with P, modulo P gives me C2. And decryption part C2 multiplied with C1 power D, the whole inverse gives me modulo P. Only this whole inverse is nothing but the multiplicate inverse of C1 power D. Is it clear, guys? Okay, I think, yeah. Uh, well, I'll just conclude with this proof of concept for Elgamal, how the decryption works in sense. We already have this uh, C2 with this. C1 is received, which is rising to power D inverse, right? I can able to write C2. If we already know C2 is nothing but E2 power R multiplied with the plain text modulo P. We've taken the modulo P as common. This is nothing but C2. And C1, C1 is nothing but E1 power R mod P, right? So modulo P is uh, taken outside. So E1 power R, then D in C becomes E1 power R T. Okay. If you remember properly, we created this E2 here. E2 is created by raising E1 power D. So I can able to write this E1, E2 as E1 power D whole thing power R. That's why I can able to write E1 power R D. Here I have E1 power R D whole inverse. So this both will cancel each other, giving me the plain test back. This is how your LGML uh, decryption uh, expression works on. Okay. We will see with an example how this LGML algorithm works in the next class. So as of now, is it clear guys uh, about LGML crypto system? If it is clear, raise your hand. If you have doubts, you can unmute and ask. Okay then. Right, so uh, I think with this we will wrap up today's session. Next class we will work out on a example on Elgamma crypto system, how it works on, then we move on. Thank you guys. Thank you.